Good morning. morning. Happy Palm Sunday. There we go. Uh, Give me a little wave. Let me know you guys are awake. There we go. It's good to see everybody this morning. Uh, Today is Palm Sunday. We begin uh, the holiest of weeks in the Christian calendar, and we begin by considering the question, why are you here? Uh, We asked that of the crowds that first Palm Sunday. Why were they there that day? We asked that of ourselves uh, this coming week, and most importantly, Uh, We look at Jesus. Our focus is on him. As we say, why are you here? Our Connection kids are uh, here with us today to lead us into the Holy Week and Palm Sunday. Uh, And so we're going to stay seated for our invocation as they process in. We begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
DJ. Come here. Where's your sister? Do you want to go sit with Lacey? You want to sit with me, DJ? You could sit right here. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Lacey. <laughs> can you can you bring DJ over to you, please? <laughs> All right, well, what fun is a Sunday morning without a little chaos, huh? So, good morning, everybody. Very good to see you here today, and it really is a good morning. Palm Sunday is a really special celebration in the church, and on that very first Palm Sunday, the people welcomed Jesus just as we are doing this morning, only they actually saw Jesus riding on a donkey. So wouldn't it be crazy Let's close our eyes and imagine if Jesus rode down the center aisle of our sanctuary riding a donkey right now. Wouldn't that be crazy? (laughs) We would wave our palm branches and shout Hosanna, which means praise the Lord in Hebrew. So we would shout Hosanna. Can you guys say Hosanna? And we could put down our jackets or our coats on the floor so that Jesus wouldn't have to walk on the ground, just like the people did back then. So today, I brought two things with me to show you. What are they? Palm branches. branches, That's right. I have two different palm branches. And are they exactly alike? No. No. What's the difference? Color. Interesting. Okay. So this one's fake and this one's real. So this one is brand new from today. And this one is old and dried up. So this one was one we used a year ago, and this is a fresh one from today. And do you know why I brought a fresh one and an old one? Why? (laughs) Because we want to remember that people cried Hosanna, and they shouted, and they were so excited to see Jesus on Palm Sunday. But only a week later, the same people turned away from Jesus, and they pretended that they didn't know him when he died on the cross. And we want to remember that we, too, turn away from Jesus sometimes. It's really easy to follow Jesus on Sunday mornings when we go to Sunday school and we go to church, but what about during the week? Do we sometimes forget about Jesus and sometimes we do things that aren't very Christian-like? Yeah, sometimes we do. So the fresh palm branch reminds us that we should praise Jesus And the old palm branch reminds us that we should not be like the people who turned away from Jesus. We need to follow Jesus all the time on Sundays too, but also during the week. And to do that, whose help do you think we need? God's help. We need God's help. That's right. So let's pray that God will help us with this, okay? So let's fold our hands to the best of our ability holding a palm branch and repeat after me. Dear God, God. we thank you. For Palm, for Palm Sunday. We thank you, thank you. for giving us Jesus, giving us Jesus. who loves us so much. much. Help us to follow, us to follow. Every, day of our lives. every day of our lives and not just on Sundays. Not just on Sundays. Amen. Amen. All right, so before you guys go to your seats, I'm going to have parents or guardians stand up where they are so that our kiddos can help us to find you. So if moms and dads of kiddos up here could stand up so that your parent or your kiddos can find you. And if anybody needs help, we can do that too.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem, with palms in their hands, gathered to greet your Son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may, in all circumstances, hail him as our King, trust in his living word, and follow him with steadfast hearts in the way that leads to eternal life. In your name we pray. Amen. We now hear from God's Word. Invite forward Maya Clark, our reader for today, as we hear from God's Word. The Old Testament reading today comes from Psalm 118, verses 19 through 29. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the feastal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading today comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Have this mind among, among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand if you are able for the reading of the gospel. The gospel reading today comes from John chapter 12, verses 12 through 36. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now, among those who went up to the worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went away and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, forgive me from this hour, but for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. And he said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. 
So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Spring is officially here, and that means the Cardinals home opener is a little more than a week away. And let's imagine just for a minute that you have tickets. Now, they're not the best seats in the world. You're not like behind home plate or up in a luxury box, but, but they're pretty good seats, and you're excited to go to the game. And so you get down to the ballpark a few hours early to take part in all the festivities that are going in and around the stadium, and you run into some neighbors. And so you hang out with them for a while, and during your time with them, uh, you ask, hey, where, where are your seats? And they say, oh, oh we don't have tickets. We're, we're, just, we're just here for the party. And you realize that they're not there for the game at all. A few hours later, you're, you're sitting in your seats, you're enjoying the game, it's the bottom of the second inning, and between batters, you look up into one of those luxury boxes to see who all those people are that might be sitting there. And you realize that they're not paying attention at all to what's going on at the field. Half of them are not in their seats. They're in the back, maybe at the all-you-can-eat buffet, or they're going to the restroom, or they're having some important conversation back there somewhere, but they're not watching the game. And the other half, the ones that are in their seats, are on their phones. They're either talking or, or scrolling, but whatever reason they're all there, it's, it's definitely not for the game. A few more hours pass. And you watch as the beer guy makes his way down the steps. He finishes up a sale. He's, it's last call. He walks down to the end of the section. He sets his cooler down. He turns his back to the game, and he scans the crowd for his next sale. And once again, it occurs to you, he's not here for the game either. He's here for work. He's here for all the people. He's here to make money. The game is simply the occasion that created this opportunity. And we could go down the list, right? Any sporting event, any concert, any large gathering, everyone is there for their own reasons, has their own why 
for showing up and participating in the festivities. And today, as we hear the perhaps familiar Palm Sunday account, I can't help but imagine that on that first Palm Sunday, the crowd was filled with the same sorts of people. People who had all sorts of different reasons for being there, all sorts of different whys for being in Jerusalem or at the festival or even going out to see Jesus. We heard the story just a few minutes ago. Uh, Maya read it for us. said a great crowd was in the city that day, was in Jerusalem for the festival. And they heard that, that Jesus, the miracle worker, was on his way. And so they took palm branches in their hands and they shouted Hosanna and they went out of the city to go and meet him. And right there in the first few verses, we get, we get one of the reasons why people were there that day. Many of them, maybe even most of them, were there for the Passover. They were there for a religious festival. And then a few verses later, John gives us another reason. He says that there were two crowds that day. There was the crowd in the city who went out to meet Jesus, but there was also a crowd that was already with Jesus, that was accompanying him on his way into the city. This was a crowd that had seen him raise Lazarus from the dead, and they were spreading word of this incredible miracle. And as they spoke, as as word of this miracle spread, the crowd swelled. And John says many of them came out because of what they had heard. They came to see a celebrity, maybe to see a miracle. Their why was the spectacle of it all. And as the crowd gets bigger and bigger, we can imagine others who might have been part of the crowd that day. Uh, We can imagine those who just uh, like to be part of crowds, people watchers, right, who heard what was going on, heard the buzz of the crowd, see everybody going in this direction, and so they kind of join in too to find out what's going on. Uh, We can imagine those who were dragged along, maybe even against their will, by a friend or a parent or a neighbor and simply couldn't find a way to say no. And so there they are in the crowd, even though they didn't really want to be there. There were those who were there to make a profit. Street vendors, pickpockets alike, soldiers on crowd control, Pharisees doing an investigation, seeking kind of their own information about Jesus and what was going on. And all of these different people, all of these different groups are all part of the same crowd in and around Jesus, and yet all of them have their own reasons for being there, their own why. At any large gathering, everyone has their own why for showing up and being a part of the crowd. It was true then. It's true today. Even even for a crowd like this one. Even for a worship service. If we took a poll today, an an anonymous poll, or even better yet, next week for Easter Sunday, if we took a poll, my guess is we get a variety of different reasons why you are here today. Maybe it's because a friend or a family member invited slash made you come, and that's why you're here today. Maybe it's because you have a child who is singing today. You're here for the music, or next week you're looking forward to the brass. Maybe it's because it's Sunday, and that's just what you do on Sundays, or maybe especially for Easter Sunday. Maybe it's because of Jesus. I suppose he ought to be in there somewhere, right? And this isn't to shame or or guilt anyone if your motives aren't the purest, because truthfully, we all have mixed motives for being here today or for coming back next week, and none of us are entirely pure. And honestly... Your why doesn't matter to me all that much. Because God exclusively works with imperfect people who have impure motives. When we are at his worst, he is at his very best. And so why you are here, your why, doesn't matter all that much. I'm just glad you're here. Whatever the reason. But even still, it's worth considering. Why are you here? What's your why? Why are you drawing near to Jesus today or this week? John tells us about another group that was part of the crowd that first Palm Sunday. He specifically calls this group out, and that was 
a group of Greeks who were there for the festival, for the Passover. And this group of Greeks goes up to the disciple Philip with a request, and, and here's what they said. I invite you to read this with me. They said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. And that's about as much as we know about this group. Uh, like I said, we know they were there for the Passover. We don't know where they came from. Uh, we don't know why they wanted to see or speak with Jesus. All we know is that they made this request to Philip, and then Philip goes and finds Andrew, and then together Philip and Andrew go and find Jesus and relay these words to him. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And then Jesus, in classic Jesus form, gives what is really kind of a non-answer. He doesn't really respond to the request. But instead, what he says somehow gives focus and clarity as to why all of it is happening in the first place. And it's a bit of a long answer. I'm going to invite you to read it with me. It, it covers two slides, but I think you guys are up for it today. Uh, but we're going to read this together, Jesus' response. And he says this, Now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of lives. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me, because my servants must be where I am, and the Father will honor anyone who serves me. Now my soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? But this is the very reason I came. And here, finally, we get to Jesus' why. The why behind everything that he has said or done so far. Uh, the why behind the teaching and the parables and the miracles and the fulfillment of prophecy, even his why for being in Jerusalem, it has all been driving to this week to this very hour, to this moment, when Jesus will be lifted up. And the double meaning behind that word is very intentional, both lifted up on the cross and lifted up in glory, because everything is about to get turned upside down. Nothing will be as it seems when the one hailed as king will be killed as a criminal, when the shame of the cross will be turned into his everlasting glory, when the death of one will mean life, for all, for the Jews who cheered him as king and then called for his death, for the Greeks who wanted to see him and asked for more than they knew, for you, for me. You see, amidst all, all that was going on that first Palm Sunday, the celebration and the crowds, all of those different whys, amidst all of it, Jesus is singularly focused and wholly committed to his why. And his why is to lay down his life for you. You are why he has come to this hour. And in this hour, his invitation for you is to see and to follow. Not to turn away, not to fall back, not to simply be a, a spectator in the crowd, but to be with him where he is, even in his death and then in life eternal. And so this week, Whatever, whatever other whys you might have this week, this week, come and see. Come and follow. Follow Jesus into the temple, into the table, into a garden, and into a courtroom. Come and see the man on the cross lifted up in all of his glory, for it is his glory to lay down his life for you. You are his why.
So come and see. Come and follow. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. Together we confess our faith using the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. The Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This time in our service, we consider the gifts and offerings we will bring to our God in the coming week. Uh, we, there are multiple ways that you can give, whether that's electronically through our member portal or our website. There's also a box in the back if you brought a physical gift or offering with you. Uh, we believe that our gifts and offerings are an act of worship, uh, a way to say thank you uh, to God for all that he has done for us. If you are a guest or a visitor here with us, welcome. We are glad that you are here and look forward to to getting to meet and greet you personally. Uh, Pastor Jeff, myself, will be out in the commons immediately following worship if you'd like to come say hello. Another way you can get in touch with us is through our Guest Connect cards. You'll find some of these in the chair backs in front of you, as well as on the table on the way out. Simply scan the QR code, fill out the contact information, and a member of our ministry team will be in touch with you. As I mentioned, uh, Palm Sunday begins Holy Week, and part of what that means uh, is there are lots of opportunities uh, to come to church in the next week. And so we continue our Holy Week worship with the service on Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. here at our South County campus. Uh, that service will also include Holy Communion. We continue on Good Friday with services at noon, 5.30 and 7 p.m. Uh, the noon and 7 p.m. service will be led by our choir, uh, organ with a tenebrae service. The 5.30 service will be a little bit more family friend friendly. And so uh, note that for your calendars and your schedules. And then we begin our celebration of the resurrection, Easter celebration, on 5 p.m. at Saturday, and then services at 8, 9.30, and 11 a.m. Sunday. And so a little bit of a different schedule on Sunday mornings. Uh, if this is your normal service, if 8.30 is your normal service, you consider Christ Memorial Church home. And just an encouragement, if you'd consider going to the 8 o'clock service, that way there's lots of room for guests uh, and visitors at our 9.30 service. Uh, if you come at 9.30, we'll be happy to see you then as well. Uh, that is our Holy Week schedule. One other thing to let you know about coming up in a few weeks, our next Pathways cohort is beginning on April 10th. Pathways is our new member class, and so if you are looking for a church home, if you just want to know more about our church, uh, who we are, what we believe and teach, uh, and how we put that into action, or if you know someone who falls into that category, uh, mark this down. Our next Pathways class begins April 10th. Uh, you can register for that by uh, talking to me, or you can give a call to our church office and ask for Donna Wilkinson and she would be happy uh, to get you set up with Pathways. I believe that's all the announcements for today. We continue with the prayers of the church. Uh, remembering those who have requested special prayers this week, I'd encourage you to pick up a copy of the In Touch on your way out. You can also download one uh, from our website. Uh, we pray for Gene Parker recovering at home, also Jackie Conti, Pat DeLunis, uh, David Kolnick, brother of Will, Salvatore Lococo, grandfather to Donna, uh, Pastor Marky Kisa, uh, and Haitian friends who are in danger and facing hardship. We give thanks to God for long life. Uh, Shirley Almansek and Nick Katsas, both celebrating birthdays this coming week. Uh, Shirley will turn 92, Nick will turn 91, and so if you know them, send them a card, give them a call, wish them a happy birthday. In our prayers of the church today, they have uh, kind of a confessional tone to it, and so we'll use that as our confession as we prepare to come to the Lord's table. I invite you to stand as you're able as we come before our Lord in the prayers of the church. Hosanna, Lord, save us. Deliver us and rescue us. Incline your ear to us and save us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hosanna, Lord, save us. Deliver us from the evil of illness, injury, and death. By your power, heal those who are sick or recovering. By your resurrection, give hope to those who mourn. We especially remember those named before you today.
Lord, in your mercy. Hosanna, Lord, save us. Forgive us when we treat the good things in our lives as the very best things, even better than you. May we look to you only for every good gift and protection from every evil. Lord, in your mercy. Hosanna, Lord, save us. Forgive us when we have sought our own way and been a law unto ourselves. Teach us to delight in your law, that we may live before you in peace and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Hosanna, Lord, save us when we fall short. Do not look upon our sins or our good works. Look only upon Jesus. And may his righteousness cover our every sin. Lord, in your mercy. Hosanna, Lord, save us. Forgive our wandering and faithlessness. Grow our hearts to be faithful and true. Lord, in your mercy. We bring our sins, even the darkest parts of ourselves, to God. We lay them before him, and we hear of his mercy and grace. From Isaiah 53, Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that brought us peace, and by his wounds we are healed. And so, for the sake of Jesus, your sins, every one of them, are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As forgiven children of God, we now pray together as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. Let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We come to the Lord's Supper uh, today. Uh, There's someone here this morning who is taking communion for the first time, and we have prepared for that. And as she gets ready to take communion, it's a reminder for all of us of why we are here. We say this often, but just so that you don't miss it, uh, we believe this isn't just a rite or a ritual that Christians go through. We believe that Jesus is here. When we say, sir, we wish to see Jesus, Jesus says, here, this is my body, this is my blood so that in a real way, we are connected to him. We can touch and taste him. We can receive everything that he has done for us at the cross is good for us here. We believe that Jesus is here in, with, and under this bread and this wine, his very body and blood for you. And so we come humbly, we come eager, and we come hungry for him. It says in Scripture that our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, this do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. This peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen you, preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. You are loved by God immeasurably. It's been proven in blood, and you will see that in this week. From that love, you are now sent by him into the world for really important work that he has just for you to do. Go with his blessing 
his provision given to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.